That gets my goat? Really? Hey, everybody. This is Rish Outfield. And I'm Big Anklevich. And this is That Gets My Goat. Yes, it is. I think you said that we were supposed to complain about something. We're supposed to be angry about something, get upset, air our grievances about something in every episode. You talk about your goat being gotten. Right. But this isn't one of those. This is like a, let's say something positive. Oh, for a I'm turning it off. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm, I'm opening the door for the potential to say something negative if you want. Oh, okay. We'll start with your positive thing and then I'll see if we can maybe somehow bring us down again at the oh, end. Oh, yeah, we will. We totally will. Spoiler alert. That's how we'll end the show. <laughs> okay, good. But it's funny because I had wanted to sit down with you and say a few things about a movie that comes out a month from now when we're recording this, probably a couple of weeks for whoever is listening. But today we got interviewed by J.M. Perkins for his podcast. And one of the first things he asked us was, are you excited about the Avengers? And we talked for how long about oh, the Avengers? Oh, wow, yeah, like 20 minutes at least. And it was a lot of it was what I had wanted to talk about today. Because I thought, okay, right now it's a month away. It would be fun if we talked about what we hope and, you know, what our expectations are and that. And then, of course, the movie will happen and we can be terribly disappointed or we can be terribly happy or, or whatever. But I thought it would be fun now to say a few words in expectations. Okay. Well, I've got a statement prepared here. Uh, oh, you do? No, go ahead. I'll let you go first. I have been hanging around, not hanging around. I, I keep encountering these DC guys. They seem to think that it's a competition. I'm, 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 You know, I don't remember in 2008 there being a big competition. It's like Marvel's got two movies coming out this summer and DC's got one movie and the DC one's going to be really kick ass and the Marvel ones are going to suck. But maybe it's because in the years since 2008, Marvel has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and DC has done nothing. Could be. Right. Has there been a DC movie since Dark Knight? Green Lantern. Oh, there has. You're right. Well, I think it's fair to say that Marvel thrashed DC last summer. I mean, Marvel had three movies, but uh, even so, Green Lantern was the least good of all of those. Yeah, and all the Marvel films did. How well did X Men do? They all did close to like 200 million, didn't they? Like 180 or 170. I'm not sure how well. I I think it didn't do it didn't do as well as Thor and Captain America, but it I think it did do better than Green, Green Lantern. Lantern. As far as audience pleasing, they all did better than Green Lantern. Right. You know, there are, there are a lot of people really anticipating Batman this year. Or Dark Knight Rises, if you want to call it its real name. Why you would want to do that, I don't know. Me neither. I'm fine with that. I, I want Dark Knight to be good. I'm sure it will be, really. I don't have as high of expectations for it as everyone else around me. Uh, maybe it's because I'm trying to keep it realistic. If I go into it saying this movie is going to be as good as Dark Knight or better, then I'm screwed. Yeah, it's pretty likely. Because You're you bound can't. to be disappointed. Can, you can't you win, can. Rocky. <laughs> right. <laughs> Though, yeah, the movie I'm feeling that way about is Avengers, and I wish that there was a way for me to lower my expectations to. To psych myself out that it can't be very good or that can't... Lowered expectations. That. <laughs> and so, I, yeah, I, because we've already had this conversation, and I don't know when his interview with us is coming out or if anybody has listened to it, we might cover some of the same ground. But what are you looking forward to this summer? Or, or are you completely superheroed out and brave is where all your eggs are? No, I I'm I am looking forward to Avengers. I really like the idea of a movie that is a sequel to like six other movies that brings a universe together. You know, you've had all these movies separately, Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, they've all been separate. I mean, sure that we've had Nick Fury show up here, there and everywhere and then there was one time that Tony Stark showed up in the end of a Hulk movie. But other than that, they've been separate. And it seems like a really interesting, really cool idea to hook all those together and make them into one. It's something that I can't think of ever happening before. So I'm really excited to see how it turns out. And I hope that it works out so that we can see stuff like this again. And also, you know, it's Joss Whedon. 
and I really, really want him to have success. I don't know. I guess it, he's somebody that I really like. He's done a lot of things that I really enjoy in the past. And so Serenity was a good film, but it didn't have a lot of box office success. So I would like him to hit that box office success this time around so that he won't have to wait as long to do another feature film as he did this last time. So that when they hire him to write a Wonder Woman movie, they'll actually make that movie instead of just bail on it as soon as he's finished with the script. Yeah, he has had his fair share or more than his fair share of disappointments or of studio obstructions or you know he he was hired to write the x-men way back in the 90s and you know that didn't happen what might have been you know and and i i'm sure he's done well for himself buffy at least was successful enough that he's well to do i would think but to have a, a huge hit movie will open doors for him for the foreseeable future, you know. If Avengers makes the kind of money that it looks like it's going to, he'll be able to make whatever he wants in the future. He'll be able to do the projects that he's always pitched to people, and they're like, uh-huh, yeah, no, what else have you got? I, I, it's, it's funny, though. I, I, I think of Joss as though I have a personal investment in his success, as though he's a friend of mine or an uncle or a cousin or, or something like that. And or a I, debtor of yours. Someone that owes you money so that he gets success, then you'll finally get paid back. <laughs> it's hard to express why I feel, well, not not why. It's hard to express what I feel for Joss Whedon, but it does feel like there's some kind of personal connection. And, and there are certain creators who, because of the relationship that they have with their fans or the way they act about their fans makes you feel like you actually know them. I mean, it's something that Stephen King would engender with his welcome back constant reader. You know, he would write little notes that you felt like was to you. You know, Stan Lee would do the same thing in his Marvel comics. You knew him as, as Stan and I, and you're a true believer and, and all that. It just, it, the thing with Joss is he's kind of one of us. He's a geek. He's a nice guy. Good guys don't ever finish first. And we want him to, but but also he's he's a creator he's a storyteller and i respond to the stories that he tells and that's probably more important than he shakes people's hands at comic conventions or or whatever the deal is you know he's like sure i'll sign your toy story and you know it's weird the, the you know he was one of the writers on toy story but nobody ever mentions that mhm mm maybe that opened doors for him in the 90s and by the time i had heard of him all of that was gone i i don't know I was, I've been talking to a lot of people about these movies this summer kind of thing. And my expectations for Avengers are really, really high. And like I said, they're almost unrealistically high. But it's not because of the shared universe thing. If Brett Ratner or if John Favreau were directing Avengers, I don't think I would be as excited and invested and sure that it's going to be great. That I am. I, I think it's the written and directed by Joss Whedon aspect of it. And we don't even know that they've given him carte blanche to do whatever he wants and say whatever he wants. You know, it seems like that would fly in the face of how movies are made if they did. If they're like, oh, here, Joss, here's 150 million. Go do your comic book project. Right. My friend just rented Transformers Dark of the Moon over the weekend, and he sent me an email before he started it because, you know, he's going to watch it with his boys. And a part of me was just like, why would you tell me that? I want to like you, <laughs> you know, and then he sent me an email on Sunday after he had watched it to tell me his feelings. And again, it's just like, I don't want to know that you spent two and a half hours watching this. I don't want to know that your DVD player was tainted by this thing. I'm going to have to watch movies on that. You kiss your mother with that mouth. But thus is my hatred for the Transformers, the Michael Bay Transformers movies. I mean, I seriously, they're, they're the bottom of the barrel. They are the cinematic dross, the cinematic crapper. Well, he was talking about, well, there was this and there was this that was really good. And he talked about a couple of the action sequences. He's like, there's this big robot sandworm that eats Chicago and stuff. Well, you saw that in the trailer. If you saw the trailers again and again and again and again, like I did, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think I saw it. And I, I just thought about, I'm a, an old guy, I guess. 
because it's rare for me to think of an action sequence anymore that wowed me that where I would want to talk to somebody else like that. Right. What wows me is a moment that surprises me or a moment where I become emotionally involved. And the last week I was telling you about there's this scene in Mission Impossible 4 where Tom Cruise is trying to go through a window. He's falling and he aims it just right and he hits his forehead on the edge of the window. He just barely misses it and, here, oh, and he almost falls. And, and that to me was one of those moments where it's just like, whoa, holy crap. Like in the dark night, the moment where the prisoner, the black guy takes the detonator and you're like, oh, shh. And then he throws it out the window was one of those moments right. where it's just, and I get, it's just a moment that takes my expectations and goes another way with it or fakes me out or, or that moment where the Joker gets the crap kicked out of him. And he finally is like, okay. And he tells them the location of where they can find Rachel Doss and Batman rushes out there to save her. And the Joker switched the addresses. So he goes to save Harvey Dent and Rachel dies. That was one of those moments where it's just like, wow, I didn't, I mean, holy crap. I had been manipulated into expecting a certain outcome and that didn't happen. That to me energizes me in the way that I guess these giant action sequences, it costs 35 million for that scene alone kind of things. Those don't do it for me. But something like that, where I go, ah, oh, and I'm emotionally invested or, you know, a part where I cry or a part where, you know, that is what I look for in a movie. That's what takes a movie from eh to good or good to great. And I have to admit, I expect more than one <laughs> scene like that in Avengers. Mm -hmm. That's something that Joss does. Yeah. I'm going to say it better than anybody. He Joss makes does. you care about something and then he tricks you. He takes your own love and he uses it against you. He killed them with their love. Yeah, exactly. It's a green mile kind of thing. Or the opposite, you know, it's like there's a really tense moment and he breaks it with a funny, fun, a moment that shouldn't work, but you laugh all the harder because you were so nervous. And everybody has their own barometer of things that they respond to, things that they get excited about or, or things that move them. And with me... You know, it's that sort of thing. And then like in horror movies, there are certain things that scare me that don't scare other people. There was that movie that Daniel Radcliffe was in, The, the Woman in Black. And that movie scared me so much, I probably watched half of it crying, which sounds like a negative. Hell no. I commend the people that made this film. I was Hammer Films tried to make a new movie and uh, that that it engaged me that much. And 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 then it was one of those horror movies where the solution was get the hell out of there. Go. Get out. Don't look back. Just go. And they did all they could to force him to stay. Where he's like, I know, I know I need to go, but I can't. That was, uh, it worked so well for me. And, and my brother-in-law saw it and he's like, yeah, that movie wasn't scary at all. It fucking sucked. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, again, my worldview was completely wrong, apparently. And so I, I, I don't know, you know, there, there may be other people out there that is like, I want a scene where the Hulk fights a guy for 10 minutes. <laughs> Or, you know, I don't know. Was, I want a scene where the Loki's got 800 million minions flying at the screen in 3D at the same time. That's what they need out of that movie. But really, all I need is to laugh and to care about these characters. And, and you know what? Joss's work is half done anyway, because I already love most of these characters. Right. You know, he's got good actors in the roles. And, and he, you know, he's got a sense of humor that makes me laugh. So chances are I will laugh and chances are I will care about what happens to Captain America and what happens to Iron Man. And, and, you know, if he can make me invest myself in the new Hulk and in this guy that doesn't look like Hawkeye, but they're calling him Hawkeye and in Scarlett Johansson. OK, Black Widow. Then, you know, I mean, he's even more successful. Anyhow, I, I, what what do you want from the Avengers? What are you hoping that you'll see a month from now? I want a Hulk to fight somebody for 10 minutes. That's pretty much all I want. And him to say Hulk smash. <laughs> okay. At some point during that. No, uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of along the same lines as you. You know, I, I think back to some of the moments like that there were in uh, Serenity 
where he's taking those characters that you love and then he, he twists you somehow. Well, see, he has Mal do things that are bad, that are unlikable. This guy that we love. And, and I wonder, was that an experiment? How much can I make Mal villainous? And that to me is another one of those things that Joss does so well. It was like, I wouldn't have expected Mal to do that stuff. The stuff that he would do on Buffy as the series went on would fly in the face of whatever conception you had of Willow or or, or Buffy or, or, or Spike or whoever it happened to be. They would do things that you'd be like, oh, F no, they'd never do that because people are like that. I, right. I don't know myself 100 percent enough to know how I would respond in certain situations, let alone a totally different person. I don't know why I mentioned that the whole Mal thing, because the the significant things in Serenity are killing off Wash the way that he did. And then that that awesome moment where the hole opens up and the little Serenity comes out and the ships are about to attack Serenity and then the Reavers come out en masse, where it's just like a blow you away moment, an audience cheer moment. Yeah. So you, you have the highest of highs and you have the lowest of lows in the same movie. That's right. That was definitely one of the lowest of lows. It's, it's like you said, you know, his work is half done because we already love these characters. We've already seen two Iron Man movies. We saw a Captain America movie, a Thor movie. We've seen two Hulk movies, so we should love Hulk. One Hulk movie. <laughs> and, and we've seen a Black Widow movie, really. Uh, Iron Man 2 was had plenty of Black Widow in it. So the only really new character is Hawkeye. And he did have a, a, we saw him in Thor, a yeah. bit in Thor. Not enough to, for us to be like, oh, I love Hawkeye and I hope nothing bad happens to him. But he's not brand new. I think it'll be really fun because that's one thing that we've seen from Joss a lot of times is how well he works a group dynamic on film. He takes nine characters, gives them all interesting things to do and great lines to say back and forth to each other. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how he does with this group of characters when you throw in uh, Nick Fury and all the rest. And I'm sure we've got Agent, uh, what's his name? Coulson. Coulson, that's it. I wanted to say Clausen, but I was I was close. Yeah, I mean, even even Agent Coulson will be back. Is there an Agent Coulson in the comics anywhere? No. He's just a It's movie possible guy. that they've incorporated him into mm-hmm. the movies, but I I mean sorry, into the comics, but I I wouldn't know about it. Isn't there supposed to be what's her face? Maria in Hill is in it. Yeah, you see her for like a second in the new trailer. We'll have to see how that all all turns out. So so her name's Kobe Smulders. She's the dark-haired girl on How I Met Your Mother and Apparently, she was Joss's Wonder Woman for when he was making it for Warners. And I thought, wow, that's so interesting. I mean, again, there's a parallel universe out there (laughs) where he made that movie. And if Avengers makes $450 million or whatever, maybe Warner Brothers will kick themselves and say, oh, you know, or they'll say, we have this perfectly good script that Joss wrote. Let's do it now. I don't know if you're Joss Whedon. Do you go back? It's like the girlfriend that kicked you to the curb now says, I'll take you back. <laughs> and, and these are things that I don't understand. I mean, he went back to Fox after what happened. It's not the same Fox, I guess, conceivably, it's not the same Warner Brothers. But true. The only other problem is that I don't imagine Joss can kill any of these characters. Yeah, there is that. I uh, Well, you never know. Maybe I mean, they don't care about Maria Hill. Maybe they don't care about. Right. There's uh, some that he could. <laughs> That's the only one I can think of. They're not going to kill Loki, right? Because he's a Thor character and there's a Thor 2 coming out next year. Yeah, Loki is not one that you would want to kill anyways because, you know, the bad guy is not the the one that's going to tug at anyone's heartstrings and make you cry. But there's some stuff that they could probably do that, you know, they could still pull some stuff like that. Death is not the only solution i mean you can humiliate a character you can have them soundly defeated you can bring iron man down a peg i mean i tony stark is his own worst enemy you can have him f up and have him have to face up to the fact that he was the weak link in that battle or whatever that is as much of a slap in the face as well maybe not quite as killing these characters but you know what i'm saying 
Is there anybody in How I Met Your Mother that Joss isn't associated with now? Uh, Jason Siegel, I don't think, has had much to do with it. Got Willow. We've got Dr. Horrible. Got, and this Maria Hill girl. We've got Maria Hill. Seems like there's one more character. The main character, the my How I Met Your Mother guy, that guy, who's the only one that I don't recognize. Josh Radnor? Maybe. You know, sadly, I've never mm-hmm. seen an episode of How I yeah, I've, I've seen parts, and I laughed, but I've never seen a whole episode, and I don't know if that means my world is incomplete. It is. It's woefully incomplete. <laughs> Someday, perhaps, you'll finally get with it. Anyways, a side note to all this Joss Whedon talk. I saw just the other day that Joss Whedon is planning on shooting Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog part two this summer. Yeah, I'd heard that too. I I think all of that's been kept under wraps. We don't know if it's going to be another 40 minute show, if it's going to be longer or bigger deal, you know, who knows? Again, if Avengers is super successful, he can say, I'm going to do Dr. Horrible as a feature film. Who wants it? And people will raise their hand. Yeah. It'll Um, be interesting to see. Uh, they finally got all their schedules aligned, apparently, to be able to do it. Oh, is that all it took? Because it's think, been five years. Yeah, I think they've been talking about doing it. Or has it only it. been four? It's been four years. I think it's only been four, yeah. They've been talking about doing it for a while, and I guess they've had a script and stuff ready to go, and they just can't work everybody's schedules out. But apparently the stars have aligned. Cool. Well, the that's, stars that's of the movie have aligned. <laughs> Are they really the ones that you have to? I guess so. Because if people are, uh, it looks like Wonder Woman, doesn't it? She does. Yeah, she's a, a she's, she's got really the gold necklace. On. <laughs> makes me think of the. Yeah, it's a shame. I I know I say that a lot, and you know what? It's possible the movie wouldn't have been good, but I I don't think so. He, that's something that Joss excels at is these strong women, these these kick ass chicks. Yeah, that aren't just boobies. You know, that they've they've also got minds and, and personalities. And it's a shame. I, I don't know if they will ever pull off a Wonder Woman movie. But if anybody could, it would have been him. Yeah. Anyhow, I, who knows? You know, the future versions of us are laughing because Avengers was such a shitty movie. And, and Joss Whedon is such a terrible monster. Uh, <laughs> or, or the opposite of that, where it's just like, oh, why did I ever worry? Lowered expectations, sing the song. Lowered expectations. Can only help you when you go see a movie. I think the very first time we talked about a movie on our show was Dark Knight. And I had such lowered expectations for that. And it would just blew me away. And, you know, it's one of those movies. There's so many moments in that movie that I could have used as an example of just like, wow. And so hopefully Dark Knight 3 will be like that. And, and Avengers will be like that. And, and I suppose we'll sit down and we'll talk about both, right? Probably. Yeah, I would be surprised if we didn't. So we'll see a month from now or a couple of weeks from now, depending on whether you're recording now with us or listening later when it's finally edited. We'll do the uh, after party. Yes. Until then. <laughs> I've been Rich Outfield. And I've been Big Anklevich. Thanks for listening, folks. Lowered expectations. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. There! Chocolate! Now! Isn't there supposed to be What's-Her-Face? Maria in Hill is in it. Yeah, you see her for like a second in the new trailer. We'll have to see how that all, all turns out. The funny thing about her is she's, um, can you remember her name? The actress? Uh, no, I don't. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue. Super hot chick. She's on How I Met Your Mother. Colby Smulders or something like that. Her name's Colby Smulders. You want me to find the sure. name for sure? Just because that sounds too shitty, huh? Is it Colby Smulders? I don't know. Colby Smudders? Can there be two L's? Smulders sounds like some kind of. A it sounds like Smolder. Yeah. Name. It does. Just like Fiery Smulders. Yeah, it, the whole name sounds made and up. Long Duck Dong. <laughs> it's Kobe Smulders. Okay. Lower expectations.